Solomon was so proud of the person that taught him. And when he wanted to defend himself, in the court of the people, in the multitude, he quoted him. He quoted him. I remember one thing that Pastor Emisi said. Pastor Emisi said that she liked to use people that has been trained by Pastor Alpha. Oh, yes. That's what she said. She said, I like to use people. I like to have people that have been trained by Pastor Alpha. I don't train the easy way. Even me know it. I don't train the easy way. But if you will yield to it, you will have an easy life. That is what my training produces. There is nobody that has sat under my training and development over the last 25 years that's begging for food. No such a person. Are you hearing me? Nobody that has submitted and yielded to my training and to my instruction that is begging for food. And so I'm teaching you what works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you are disrespectful, nobody will want to deal with you. You may not know it, but that's the truth. Your name is mentioned. I say, no, look for somebody else. That's just one case. And as we go in through the character development, you will become very respectful. Even now already, you will know how to address those that senior you. No, you will know how to address them. Do you know that people will only teach those that respect them? Did you hear what I said? For instance, if you don't respect me, I will never teach you things. I can preach for you. But I will not teach you things. Why teach you? Why you are ignorant, you don't respect. When you are taught, it will be worse. And that is why God will not use those that are, you see, there are people that try to be close to me, but I keep a distance from them. Why? Because I know that they don't have respect. Not only for me, but for the things of God. And so I keep my distance away from them. They may try to push closer, but I will set, step back because I don't want to be part of them. Amen. We are, when we are disrespectful to the things of God, God will keep a distance from us. I'm telling you the truth. You may get certain things here and there, peripheral lessons and all that, but the main thing will not come to you because God knows what you will turn to if he will give you to you. Amen. Paul took 12 of them aside. The Bible said he began to train them. He began to develop them, mentor them. And then after that, the Bible said the entire Asia received the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. The same thing can happen to you. You can be somebody that God can use. You can be somebody. You see, the training that you are receiving here can change your life. It can change your level. The entrance of the word, it gives what? And understanding. So, allow yourself to be trained. Release yourself to be trained. Because you don't have any other way to rise up as a Christian. God does not have different ways. God only has one way. Jesus said, I am that way. I am what? Way. The truth and the life. The more of Christ in you is the less crisis you have in life. More Christ, less crisis. Amen. More Christ, less lie. Or less deception of the enemy. More Christ, less death in your life in anything. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. 
Say, I am going to be trained. I am going to be equipped. I am the Lord. I change not. Because of the people, Saul missed God. His generation missed God. Because of the people, Saul disobeyed God. Because of the people, Saul didn't have opportunity to repent. And God is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. You said that you didn't want any problem with anybody. Then you will have problem with hell. I would prefer that you will correct me than allow me to go to hell. If you correct me and I have problem with it, you've done your job. Praise the Lord. And so you need to be a watchdog. You need to be your brother's keeper. You come to a point where you know you love God. You look at what happened to the centurion in the book of Luke. The servant was sick. The servant was sick. He said, Jesus, come and heal my servant. And then the elders of Israel said, this man is worthy of this miracle. Do it for him. Do it for him. And Jesus said, let's go. And while Jesus was on the way, the man said, let Jesus not come. Let him speak the word. He said, I am a man under authority. Why did they say the man was worthy? They said that the man loves their nation, Israel. And the man has built them a synagogue. Has built them a house of God. There is no investment you make in the kingdom that is unprofitable. When you feed God's people, it's a great investment. When you pay power bill in the house of God, it's an investment. When you sweep the house of God, it's an investment. When you go for evangelism, it's an investment. Whatever you do in the house of God is an investment into your destiny, not into the destiny of the church. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Many don't have record. And people say, I pay my tithe. Listen, tithe is a debt you owe to God already for blessing you. It is, that is why the Bible said in Malachi chapter 3, tithe and offering. It is your offering that demonstrates your love. Your tithe does not demonstrate your love. Tithe is what you are already owing to the Lord. You pay that. It is 10% of what God gave you. Tithe is not supposed to be discussed about. It's nothing to do with loving God. Praise the Lord. So, to pay tithe is not a demonstration of love. It is what you do after you are tithe. That tells God whether you love him or not. And that's why I say to you, anything that will make you not to give to the kingdom of God, don't take that step. If you calculate your budget and you say, if I enter this school, I won't be able to pay my tithe. I won't be able to give offering. Don't enter the school. Look for another school and then ask God for grace in that school. Are you hearing me? Ask God for grace in that school. You are going to buy a house, and you said if you buy it, it will stretch our finances. You won't be able to pay that. Around. Don't buy that house. Ask God to give you another house. He said, Lord, if we are to buy this place now, we won't be able to honor you with tithe. We won't be able to pay you offering. But Lord, because of you, we will pass this house. But I'm going to believe you for another house, a better house, where I can still serve you and give tithe and give offering another. And you you practically refuse to take the house even though it is affordable to you but you refuse to take it because it will stretch you in the area of giving in the house of god you think that god will not look at it as a record ask cornelius in house of the apostles our giving demonstrates our faith in god the size of our giving demonstrates how close we are with god praise the lord and the truth is that everybody that is saved can give something to God. And that is the way love is. Amen. This seminar, my prayer is that at the end of it, which I don't know when it will end, That it will transform you. Amen. And you have a notebook called character development. Like today, you write the topic, why I need the training. Why I need to be trained. Why I need the training. 
Praise the Lord. And what should be your first reason? Because I want God to use me. Hosea 4, 6. You are not doing it because of me. You are not doing it because of the church. You are doing it because God said, I will reject ignorant people. That's what God said. And so, why must I take this seminar serious? Why must I apply myself to this training? He said, because... I don't want God to reject me. And then when you bow your knees and say, Lord, help me to learn all I can learn in this seminar. Help me to make the best out of this seminar. Lord, because I'm looking at you using me in your kingdom. That is the right way to go. Praise the Lord. I am looking. You are not getting it to get a position. Praise the Lord. In the kingdom of God, overtaking is allowed. In Revival Assembly, this is the church where we got married. There was a guy, he was called a church carpenter. When there's something to be fixed, he will be called. He will come and fix it. And then from fixing, he's already coming to church. He was so faithful in repairing things and coming to church. He became a leader. A carpenter. He became a leader, a fisherman, becoming a leader. Are you hearing me? He was so faithful, he became a pastor in the ministry. He came as a carpenter to fix things. He ended up as a pastor. Amen. Amen. It's not how long, it is how well. It's not pastor that promotes, it's God that promotes. And when God sees your faithfulness, I don't dictate to God. Nobody will ever dictate to God. After all, David was in the bush when God chose him. His brothers were fighting for the nation. He was protecting the father's sheep. Look at it. His brothers were fighting for the nation. They were in the army. David was in the bush keeping the father's flock. And God looked through all the people in the army, the whole army of Israel. God did not find one person to use. He went to a bush and took a shepherd boy. That is still the God we serve. I remember one of our daughters in Munich when she joined the ministry and got born again. And then she would be doing something in the kitchen. A lot of people that were there, but they would say, we were here before you. And she would do her things quietly and say, I will overtake you people. She will answer them, I will overtake you people. And you know what happened? Over time, she overtook those that were mocking her in the church. They will now call her to open the church for, her, for them to come in. Listen, listen. God does not look after who was first. Are you hearing me? God looks after whose heart is first. And training can make all the difference. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Give yourself to be trained. And the word of God is our instrument for your training. The word of God is our instrument for your development. And as we teach Please receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can already start working on your life. I just showed you what to write, what to pray. You can't go wrong with that. And that is the introduction for the CDI. Wherever you are, as you receive this message, as you receive this teaching and this training, Remember what the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 7. It says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I want to encourage you to submit yourself to be trained. Submit yourself to be taught. Submit yourself to be pastored. That is the easiest way. That is the fastest way to get rid of the devil. That is the fastest way to overcome the devil. It is so easy. Prayer comes second. But attitude. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Attitude. So, be fully connected. Be a student of this class. And give yourself to learn and to study. And also share with your friends that there is a program that helps you to develop a better character. Yes, you can be heavily anointed. And you may not be with character. The Holy Ghost can train, can give you the anointing and the grace for many things. But the Holy Ghost will not train you. Because he has created instruments in his church for your training and your equipping. Amen. Amen. So this class is open to everybody. Businessmen, uh, leaders, teachers. Anybody can join this class. It is free. It is open to all. But one thing I guarantee you is that it will transform your life. It will change your ministry. It will change your family. So give yourself to it and see what the Lord will do. And you can go back and listen to this message over and over again on Alpha Media. It is there. And as you do so, and as you follow these classes, God will use it to transform your life and your ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Until we come again your way. This has been Alpha Media Production. And it's our pleasure to have ministered the word of God to you. And I hope to see you again. God bless you.